The B-29 was the most technologically advanced bomber in World War II. They flew farther, faster, and carried a higher bomb load than any of the other World War II U.S. bombers. They also adopted an effective remote-controlled gun system. They were well-suited in defending themselves and attacking Pacific Theater targets from bases in Saipan, Tinian, and Guam. For crew comfort, the bombers were pressurized, insulated, and heated. The intent of this video was to walk and crawl through the B-29 bomber from tip to tail, discussing factoids along the way. The channel has produced many B-29 videos detailing the bomber's crew stations, combat effectiveness, bombing tactics, weapons, and missions, as shown in the channel's B-29 Everything's playlist. This image shows the B-29's three pressurized crew zones, the forward crew compartment, aft crew compartment, and tail gunner's compartment. The communications tunnel connects the forward and aft crew compartments. The 10 to 12 crew members are located at these stations. In later models, two additional crew members occupied the crew rest area. These crew positions are the radar operator located here and the electronic countermeasures operator here. We are entering the forward crew compartment through the nose gear wheel well pressure door, closing the door and moving forward. Notice the design similarities of the B-29's greenhouse transparencies to those on the Millennium Falcon. Lifting the backrest and sitting down. The bombardier's control panel is to the left. The Norton bombsight is mounted between his knees. You can just make out the sight's crosshairs. The gun's turret control box is to the right. The stowed pedestal gun sight can be deployed over the Norton bombsight. The gun sight controls the forward, upper, and lower gun turrets. The bombardier has excellent visibility from this station. All crew stations come equipped with a 1936 Ford model year ashtray. Moving aft, we see the co-pilot's position. He will take command of the plane if the pilot becomes disabled. The pilot's island stand is in view. The plane's autopilot is also located in this stand. The plane's control wheel and instrument board. The B-29's flight engineer crew station is located here. He is facing aft and is responsible for engine, fuel, and systems management. He is the busiest person on the crew. This image identifies the B-29 engineer's flight controls, gauges, switches, and meters. The compartment's windows are located so he can observe the engines from his station. Behind the flight engineer sits a radio operator. He is responsible for all plane communications. The navigator sits across from the radio operator on the port side. This instrument relays the information to the gun's computers. This instrument is an optical B3 drift meter, which can be used to estimate drift and ground speed. To get to the aft crew compartment, we will need to crawl through this 35-foot long communications tunnel. It will take around 50 seconds. As we approach the end of the tunnel, the central fire control officer's barber chair is in view. From the body station 646 pressure bulkhead where the communication tunnel ends, we can move towards the left side blister gunner station. Like all crew stations, he has a heated closed rheostat, oxygen walk-around bottle, oxygen gauges, and oxygen regulator. For better visibility, the General Electric Design pedestal gun sight protrudes into the plexiglass blister. He uses this gun sight for ranging, tracking, and firing on Japanese bomber interceptors. In the early nighttime firebomb missions, the gunners were instructed to shoot out searchlights. At the base of the barber chair are toggle switches which determine which right-left blister gunner has control of the lower forward, lower rear, or tail turret. The right blister station has identical controls to the left blister station. The central fire control crew member sits in a barber chair and scans the sky above the bomber through his crown blister. He also has an illuminated reticle for tracking, ranging, and firing. His chair and gun sight rotate separately. He uses his feet to rotate the barber chair. He has exclusive control of the aft upper turret. This crew cavity contains the electronic countermeasures and radar operator stations. The circular opening ahead is the body station 834 bulkhead pressure door. For reference, we are in this section, except in lieu of bunks, this B-29 was outfitted with electronic countermeasures and a radar operator station. This is the electronic countermeasure station. He sits on the plane's chemical toilet. The rule of thumb is the first crew member to use it will clean it on landing. He's responsible for both jamming radar and radio communications. These are the plane's control surface cables. Don't grab them or you will be flying the airplane. The ECM blade antennas are located here. The radar operator sits here at this station. The AN-APQ-13 radar was used for both navigation and bombing. 
about 100 miles in range. The radar disk sits between the bomb bays and is housed in a streamlined fairing. This image shows features of the station. We are standing here at the body station 834's pressure bulkhead and will travel towards the tail gunner's compartment. This zone is not pressurized and will isolate the tail gunner when the plane is pressurized. The auxiliary power unit or putt-putt is in view as is the lower aft turret. The turrets are fed by 500 rounds of a 50 caliber armor-piercing incendiary cartridge. You can tell this cartridge was used by the bullet's silver tip. Moving past the turret, we will need to crawl at this point, passing over the tail skid's housing, finally reaching the tail gunner's pressurized compartment. We can now stand up. If you've enjoyed this B-29 interior tip-to-tail walk crawlthrough, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.